But right now what I would say is to try to resist the urge to sort of pattern or template match to things you see in the literature, particularly that group level data, because individual measurements are going to have a lot of fine structure that you don't see when you average a lot of data and see these nice smooth measurements. I think you do have to really kind of think back about the mechanics and what these measurements are telling us. So we're looking across a broad frequency range, we're getting information about stiffness, dominated characteristics at the low frequencies, mass characteristics at the high frequencies, the resonance characteristics. Um, and I think if you can sort of think about how what it's telling us about the mass and the stiffness and the resonance, um, it can still be a relatively simple interpretation, um, but you can compare it to norms that way. And then also add that sort of piece to your puzzle of the other assessments in your battery. So if you have someone who doesn't have conductive hearing loss and doesn't have any auditory complaints and it's a bit outside the normative range, that's probably just consistent with whatever the mechanics of the, sort of their normal middle ear is. But if you have someone that has a conductive hearing loss and reduced wideband tympanometry absorbance in the low frequencies, that's telling you that conductive hearing loss is likely due to some increased stiffness in the system somewhere, perhaps due to otosclerosis or something similar to that. So thinking about sort of the um, broad mechanical effects and how that couples to what you know from other testing you've done can be probably the most useful thing you can do.